Here we are at the school garden with Connie and we are going to be building a cloche to protect our plants for the winter. Um, protect it from the rain and the wind and we'll be able to extend the harvest into the winter. Hi, um, we're going to build this cold frame today and um, we already started as you see, uh, the plans for this are at the end. And we used yellow, we used cedar for this, not yellow cedar, but regular cedar. Um, even though it costs a little bit more, in the long run, it'll be way better because it will last you a lifetime, basically. So you won't have to ever build this again, which um, is a wonderful thing because it saves on materials and labor and time, and you can just keep using this. And you can use a cold frame in the winter to, um, you know, protect your plants, but in the summer you can also use it to start little seedlings or to shade your lettuce or once you have this structure, it's um, very multi-purpose. So uh, what we've done here is we've screwed these boards together already, screwed the sides together so you didn't have to watch the whole thing, uh, screwed the back together and uh, we're just going to attach the sides to the back now. Here it is in its place. So with this one, we did put it together on a level surface and it does make it easier to get 90 degree angles and to join everything up if you're working on a level surface. So what we did is we put this together on a level surface and then we carried it in here. Now if your garden is really, really level, you can probably get away with building it right there. But it, it might be easier even if you uh, did the majority of it on a level surface and then the last little bit uh, in your garden. It helps to have it level because if, uh, if it's all fitting really well, it'll stay together for years and years and that's what we want. So the trickiest part of this whole thing is cutting this angle here and that uh, is done out of a 2 by 6 and the matching side is on the other side. But that is the hardest part of, of this whole thing. Other than that, it's just cutting the boards to length and it's um, reinforcing the corners. And we did add some extra reinforcement in the corner here above and beyond the plan, just to sort of hold these boards together better. Um, so um, really simple construction. It can be rough cedar. It doesn't have to be sanded. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid on. Here's Connie finishing up the ver the last little bit of the lid, screwing in the last few screws to finish our cloche. So the lid on this, um, there's a few things to think about when you're doing the lid on your cold frame. And it really is better to have some sort of rigid material because no matter how tightly you stretch your plastic film, your uh, roll of plastic film, when we get heavy rains, um, if that rain freezes, it starts to stretch the plastic and it, there's just no getting around it. And so water will pool in there. And um, so some sort of rigid plastic is good. We chose the chloroplast, even though the light uh, transmission is not as good as it is with uh, some of the acrylics. It's a really easy to find material. It's relatively inexpensive compared to the acrylics and the polycarbonates. It has good insulating values. Um, and it, the way it diffuses the light is really good for uh, anyone who is not like right on top of their cold frame like all the time because what can happen in the winter on a really sunny day is if um, the sun starts hitting this cold frame and all the heat is trapped inside then your stuff can actually get quite hot to the point where it literally cooks it and so uh, you know it, and it's fine if you're home all day and you can open up your cold frame or if you just open it up before you leave in the morning uh, but then the stuff gets cold during the day um, you don't know with unpredictable weather and sometimes the weather changes back and forth so many times so with this particular uh, covering this chloroplast 
what happens is it diffuses the light enough that it's not going to overheat significantly in the winter. So that's really helpful. The other thing is you'll notice that there's no edging along the bottom part of the lid. And that's so that any water or any snow that hits it can actually run off. So this is framed all around except on the bottom so that water can just run down off the edge here. And that uh, really helps to uh, preserve the covering and uh, it, so it, it also won't bow. But this material is pretty rigid, so it probably won't. So what we have in this bed is some lettuce and this was planted earlier this season. So it's, um, it's late September right now, and uh, this was probably planted in, what, August? Um, and so the thing about winter growing is that it's really good to get as much stuff into an area that you're going to overwinter as you possibly can before the weather gets too cold. By mid-October, um, things aren't going to grow that much because the days are short and they're dark and so what you want to do with these cold frames is you want to pack them as full as you can um, as early in the season as you can um, and we can still get um, plants to overwinter and the other thing that works really well sometimes and it it's almost like, I feel like it's almost like magic, is if you haven't had a chance to get your plants this big, don't get discouraged. Um, plant some seeds anyway. Build a cold frame, plant some seeds anyway. And even if they don't come up this fall, don't despair. When it starts getting warmer in February or March, sometimes you'll see the thing full of seedlings all of a sudden. One good crop to do with that is cilantro, uh, corn salad, some lettuces. If you seed some of the seeds now, seeds are really the cheapest part of the whole thing. Even if you have to buy your seeds, but especially if you save some seeds, then you can experiment with them. And I've had a lot of good success with stuff that just self-seeded, which means it kind of fell off the plant and, and seeded itself in the, my soil at this time of the year. So why not take some seeds that you've saved or some seeds that you've bought and experiment with them and put some in? Uh, because lots of times they will germinate quicker in the spring than if you wait for the soil to be uh, just right to work and you wait till everybody else is planting. Sometimes overwintered seeds actually will germinate more quickly and so you'll have a crop more quickly. So it's really worth trying. You'll find a link to all the details of the supplies that you will need it above right now.